Hello, Town of Rochester. Thank you for joining me on our first set of the three-part series of History in the Making of the Town of Rochester. We are so rich in history. We are one of the few towns that have the original documents of the establishment of the Town of Rochester dating back to 1703. Much of these documents are written in Dutch and the scripture is a work of art in itself. History is important because it grounds each and every one of us in our roots. Studying the history of our hometowns and related regions can give us deeper, more meaningful glimpse into our ancestral past and how we got to where we are today. Now join me on an adventure as we take a glimpse into the past. The first known description of Rochester area comes through the journals of Captain Lieutenant Martin Krieger, who was in charge of the Sopus Militia in 1663. During this time, the lands of the Rondap Valley area were occupied by Native Americans, who were known at that time as the Delaware Indians or the Esopus Indians. Beginning in the 1680s, European settlers from the Netherlands, France, and England came to the town of Rochester by the way of Kingston, Hurley, or New Paltz. In the original Rochester patent, named in the honor of the Earl of Rochester, which was dated June 25, 1703, Queen Anne of England granted the town trustees the right to convey to settlers ownership of lands in the town of Rochester. The population was 334. Prior to 1703, it was called the town of Mumbacus, and the tradition of the town is that when the first settlers came near the junction of the stream sound of Accord with the Rondout, there was a huge buttonwood tree with the carving of a human face. This was done by the Native Americans as a memento of a battle fought there many years ago. The Dutch called it Mumbacus, meaning silent face. The original center of the hamlet of Accord was the area at the intersection of Whitfield Road and Kings Highway, now known as Route 209. It was the site of town business transaction, post office, court was held, trustees met and held town businesses. The meetings took place in what was called a dwarf hues or a townhouse. By this time, there were already established sawmills and corn mills. The three original trustees, Moses Depew, Colonel Henry Beekman, and Captain Joachim Schoemaker began recording town minutes, which are on file in the clerk's office. And by 1710, additional elected positions such as supervisor, town clerk, a collector, an assessor, a surveyor of highways, and a constable were added. The first town supervisor for the town of Rochester was Captain Joachim Schoemaker, serving 1709 to 1711. There was much fertile land to be found between the North Catskills and the South Shawangans that caused agricultural business to increase the population quickly to 3,927. It goes without saying that the basic activity nearly for every family in the town of Rochester during this time was farming. There was also production of wintergreen oil, quarrying of millstone and bluestone, blacksmithing, coppering, shoemaking, wagon making, store keeping, milling of corn, wheat, lumber, and eventually paper. During the American Revolution, many of Rochester's men went to fight in the various militias. The town of Rochester contributed food and provisions for General Washington and General Clinton's armies. When Kingston was burned by the British in 1777, all the old records and important papers were brought out to Rochester and hidden in some old stone houses for safekeeping. The stone house is one of the distinguishing features of early settlement in the town of Rochester. Stone houses were built from the earliest period of the town settlement dating from the late 17th century and their popularity extended into the canal era until the mid 19th century.
Historically, there has never been an incorporated village within the township. The two largest and principal communities in existence today are the hamlets of Accord and Allegorville. In addition, there are a small number of hamlets known by such names as Cherrytown, The Clove, Fantine Kill, Granite, Kerhonkson, Cripplebush, Kaiserak, Leapheart, Metacahonks, Millhook, Bumbacus, Palentown, Potalkum, Pine Bush, Potterville, Rochester Center, St. Joseph, Tabasco, Vernoy Falls, Whitfield, and Yeagerville. By 1790, several school districts with one-room schoolhouses and elected trustees had been organized, including Newtown, known as Whitfield, Mumbacus, Kaiserak, and Pleasant Ridge, later known as Rock Hill. The total number of districts eventually reached 16, many of which continued to operate into the 1950s. Rochester's religious situation for the first two centuries was the Dutch Reformed Church. Begun in 1695 and officially organized in 1701 as the Rochester Church, the church had four stations in the town which were visited once a month by the pastor for preaching services, Whitfield, Metacahonks, Potalkum, and Cherrytown. Each of these stations held Sunday school and met weekly. By 1859, Accord Methodist Church grew quickly serving primarily people of English descent. After World War I, changing patterns of population began to change the religious life in town as well, bringing the Roman Catholic and the Jewish communities to our area. boom times for Allegorville and Port Jackson came during the era of the Delaware and Hudson Canal, which was constructed alongside the Rondout Creek and operated between Kingston and Honesdale, Pennsylvania from 1828 to 1902. Port Jackson, named after the newly elected president of that time, Andrew Jackson, was the location of stores, hotels, and a lumberyard. This was often the location of shipping the Rosendale cement and barrels. Men that worked for Mohawk often would come down the mountain into Allegorville. The hamlet of Allegorville consisted of a post office, five grocery stores, a meat market, four hotels, a bar and a ballroom, a copper shop, a coal yard, a brick yard, a carriage manufacturer. It became a tourist area as cattlemen would herd their cattle from Sullivan County to Kingston, New York, often stopping in Allegorville for food, rest, or entertainment. As technology advanced, the canal was replaced by the railroad. The entire town of Rochester enjoyed a period of prosperity from 1902 into the 1940s, when the o and Railroad with stations in Accord and Allegorville provided transportation to market for products of local farms, mills, and quarries. Additionally, the trains brought in summer visitors from urban centers, chiefly in New York City, who were in search of fresh air and health food for their families. For the better part of the 20th century, the summer resort industry played an important role in the economic life of the town. Mohawk and Lake Minnewaska played huge tourist roles in the town of Rochester, offering accommodations for paying guests and later on a total of over 50 bungalow colonies, camps, boarding houses and hotels were also added. Today we still have successful family owned farms and businesses that have brought great tourism to our area and a part of the outdoor recreation that attracts so many today. Thank you for joining me and don't forget to tune in next week as we explore the education in local schoolhouses within the town of Rochester.